Hi everybody, I'm King Catholic. This is Season 4, Episode 19, and today's topic is how should we deal with those who ridicule us? And before we get into it, I wanted to say don't forget to go to kid-catholic.com slash shop and order your very own awesome Kid Catholic t-shirt right now. The link to that will be in the description and in the comments. So, let's get into it. So how should we deal with getting attacked for our faith? And a lot of times in the 21st century, it can sometimes be hostile to be Catholic. I have gotten some very mean comments because I preach Catholicism. And I'm sure you guys as adults, kids you might not have, but you might have probably gotten some comments uh, about how you are Catholic and about how wrong that is. So it can sometimes be very hostile and it can sometimes be very hard to deal with these things. And so how should we react to it? How should we treat those who do say stuff like that? And I want to start off with just people in general, not only those who say something about our Catholicism, but people in general. And one of the most famous parts in the Bible is right here in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. So basically, right here, Jesus is preaching to the people, and some people who don't like him are trying to give him a question that he can't answer to prove that he is not God. And so they asked him, which commandment is the greatest? And this was his response. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. So the second greatest commandment is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So he is saying the common theme here is love. If you love your neighbor, that'll make you want to love God. If you love God, that'll make you want to love your neighbor. If you love yourself, then you need to love your neighbor equally to yourself. That's really hard to think about. Love your neighbor as equal as yourself. It's really hard to try to put others up there with you. But Jesus is asking us to do it here no matter what form. He doesn't say, love your Catholic neighbors as yourself. He doesn't say, love your certain race neighbors as yourself. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Man or woman, all kinds of races, all kinds of religions, you should love them as yourself, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from. That's really hard to think about. And you, another thing it says is you should put God first. That means put God first above everything else, above your TV, above your alone time. Use your alone time to pray and to put God first and love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, just like the Bible is telling us. So now we know, since the Bible explicitly tells us how to treat those who ridicule us for your, for your faith, but in a certain specific scenario, if you're standing, let's say, in a line at a fast food restaurant, and they're wearing a Catholic t-shirt, and this person behind you kind of says, like, that's wrong, or you shouldn't be doing that, or you get some comment on your Facebook post or something, what should you say back? And the Catechism of the Catholic Church right here has a very explicit answer. Right here in the CCC 2477, it says, Respect for the reputation of persons, no matter what form of religion, forbids every attitude and word likely to cause them unjust injury. He becomes guilty of rash judgment, who even tactically assumes us true, without sufficient foundation, the moral fault of a neighbor. So if you assume that something is doing something wrong and you don't have any proof, then that is a sin that's wrong, that's rash judgment, and we shouldn't treat others like that, but more specifically of detraction, who without objectively valid reasons discloses another's faults and fa failings to persons who did not know them, and then of calumny, who by remarks contrary to the truth harms the reputation of others and gives occasion for false judgments concerning them. So basically lying about someone that'll hurt their reputation, like this person did this and telling others about that, gossiping. Now it says right here in CCC 2478, to avoid rash judgment, so to avoid judging those who ridicule you, or to avoid using unjust words to those who ridicule you, it says, everyone should be careful to interpret in so far as possible his neighbor's thoughts, words, and deeds in favorable way. Every good Christian ought to be more ready to give a favorable interpretation to another statement than to condemn it. So if they try to tell you that it's wrong, instead of just saying, or if they try to argue something with you, no matter what it might be, instead of just saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. What it's saying is you should put yourself in them shoes 
in their shoes, try to see how they interpret it. Try to see how they view it. And then it says to another, but if he cannot do so, so if you really can't interpret what their view is, let him ask how the other understands it. So you can say, well, how do you see it? Instead of trying to imagine how they see it, you can ask. And if the latter understands it badly, let the former correct him with love. So it's not saying just argue, it's saying correct him with love. I want to stretch those words. Correct him with love. That doesn't mean argue, that doesn't mean yell. That means calmly, lovingly, try to tell them the truth. Try to tell them what we know. And then further it says, if that does not suffice, let the Christian try all suitable ways to bring the other to a correct interpretation so that he may be saved. That is the ultimate goal. I want to stretch those words, he may be saved. I love this part in the CCC. You want to use all ways possible, no matter what it is, all suitable, so kind ways possible, to try to get them to understand. We love them, right? Our goal, our goal on planet Earth is to get people to heaven, right? To get ourselves to heaven and to get others to heaven. That is the ultimate goal, right? And we need to do so not in a harsh, arguing way. We can't just yell at somebody who ridicules our faith. We can't yell at them no matter what form it might be. Maybe it's over the internet. Maybe it's in person. We need to calmly try to get them to the correct interpretation so that they too may discover Jesus and so that they too may find God. So the simple answer to how to deal with those who ridicule you for your faith is love. And not only love others, just like the Bible tells us, love God too and put God first and show others that you're putting God first, not only in words, but in actions as well. People know that you're Catholic and that you love God, yet you do something terribly wrong, a sin. Maybe it's not terrible, but it's a sin. We all, we all sin, not one of us is perfect. We should try our best to act exactly like Jesus did. Obviously we can't because we sin, but we should try our best to not sin and to show a perfect reputation, to show what a Catholic should act like so that others are affected by our kindness and by a Catholic's kindness so that others can convert and we can get more people to heaven, which like I said, is the ultimate goal. So now that the topic is done, do you guys know what it's time for now? It's time for the Saint of the Week. Back at the Saint Sofa and today's Saint of the Week is Saint Lawrence. Now, Saint Lawrence is a perfect saint for this week's topic because he underwent a lot of ridicule for his faith. He was an incredible martyr. He was born in Spain and ended up in Rome in about 200 AD. Is around uh, when he was during his lifespan and at that time it was very hostile for Christians in Rome. It was a newborn church and Romans hated Christians. They couldn't stand them and so he did while he was in there he did all he could. He cared for the ill, he cared for the poor, he did all he could to do what God asked and several deacons, the, arch, the bishop, bishops were being martyred, were being beheaded and so he did his best before he was captured, before he was martyred, because he knew it was coming, yet he still remained in Rome, because he knew that it was right for him. He knew that he was going to die. He knew that he was going to be martyred, but it didn't matter. So he went and collected all, or a lot of the Catholic physical material that is important to the church, such as documents, before Romans could get their hands on them and burn them. So he kept them, he stored them, and he kept them safe. He worked his best. And just at that, he was captured and taken to where he was going to die. And he did not, he wasn't scared. He did not back down. He knew that he was soon going to see Jesus in heaven. And it is so cool to think about that even though he knew he was going to die and he had the opportunity to leave, he stayed there because he knew it was right. That is awesome. And a lot of us hopefully won't be in a situation we probably won't be in a situation where we need to leave or else we'll die because of our faith right but we c will be in a situation where we have the opportunity to walk away from the church right to walk away of because of fear right and anytime that's happening we need to look to saint lawrence we need to look up to saint lawrence anytime we're feeling like that to stay where we are and to continue to have faith and to never ever fear what might be coming next because it is all God's 
plan. Anyway, later St. Lawrence arrived at his execution and he was roasted alive. And it's very gruesome to think about, but just just get this. All right, now this is not confirmed. This is only tradition, but tradition says that the ashes of his body flew into the wind and that they will randomly appear in different places throughout the world on his feast day. Again, that's not confirmed, that's not for sure, but how awesome does that sound? That is actually awesome. And so, like I said, we need to look up to St. Lawrence, to pray through St. Lawrence anytime we feel like we just want to walk away, anytime we fear the future. We need to know that it is all God's plan and that it will be okay. And we also need to know to kindly treat those who ridicule us, just like I talked about in the topic, just like St. Lawrence did. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video. Please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. That way you get notified when I come out with a new video. Also, like I said, don't forget to go to kid-catholic.com slash shop right now and order your very own Kid Catholic t-shirt. Also, don't forget to comment any topic or saint suggestions that you might have. Check out all three of my social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description and in the comments. I'll see you guys next week. And hi, Brielle!